Yeah, okay. I'm Zaki Manion. I am from SkewChain. Uh, we build trade finance solutions using blockchain technology. I, I was going to talk a little bit, uh, the point of this very shortened presentation on both explaining what SkewChain is and sort of how we think of Interledger, where we think it's a use case. And I guess the big takeaway message that I want to communicate is we mostly think of Interledger as an abstraction layer over um, the payment net, like the payment system. So basically, we want to make our the system that we're going to talk about more general by having an abstraction layer to other payment systems, um, so that people who are using our system um, can, don't have to think about exactly how they implement uh, connecting payments to it. They just think about, okay, we figured we have Interledger and we're fine. So a problem domain is trade finance. Um, we have built a solution to that problem that we call brackets, and they're essentially a form of computable contract. Um, and basically, in order for Interledger to support our use case, we basically just need to be able to treat the cryptographic conditions of an escrow um, as something that can be hosted on blockchain, um, which seems to be relatively easy, given the way we've. So just a little bit of the motivation of this, like this comes up a little bit, like there's skepticism about all applications of blockchains, like why should we use a shared ledger? So we have multi-party relationships. These relationships um, typically are sort of deeply interwoven with legacy processes, like the sort of roots of all of these contract forms are 400 years old. Um, Christopher Columbus was carrying letters of credit on his ship. Um, so that we basically, like this is basically like as old as companies and banking. Um, it predates nation states, it predates international law. Um, so it's a very old system. It's a very inherently multi-party system. Um, and basically what we've been telling them as engineers, this industry is we can automate everything if we can just find one centralized trustworthy party to run the database. Um, and this industry tells you that we've been looking for them for a thousand years and they don't exist. <laughs> um, so what we imagine is a system of authenticatable data based on shared distributed ledger technology as a system for automating and improving the trust of these systems. Um, so when we say what is it that we actually care about, we care about who the parties or the parties care about, who has agreed, what has been purchased, when is payment due, um, and being confident in those facts drives payment, drives financing, um, and the process of becoming confident in those facts is the primary way in which these processes are slow. Um, and the sort of current state of the art is you pass the documents that you produced at each step of these processes through multiple document examiners who will go as far as verifying an original signature by licking their finger and swiping and, you know, uh, swiping the signature to see that it was actually like signed with a pen and it wasn't written back. Um, so like obviously there's an application of cryptography that's probably going. And it's just about defining uh, the shape and form of it. Um, so we don't deal with cryptocurrencies, we don't deal with virtual currencies. This is not about value transfer on blockchains. This is about computing over assent and notarization and authenticity of information. So I'm going to talk about brackets in a super abstract form rather than like a concrete user experience form because that concrete presentation takes a lot longer than the 10 minutes we I'm sort of targeting. Um, so you agree on what, so our process is that like when you want to enter into a trade relationship, the party is beginning with the buyer and seller and then potentially joined by financing partners. Um, agree to all of the cryptographic conditions that they need to meet before the contract is considered sort of both initialized and then all the events that occur. Um, so this can be like, you need to provide this cryptographic signature when the goods have been sent, or you need to provide this cry a cryptographic signature on this message when an invoice is accepted. Um, and so basically the way in which we think about including brackets in the, in the blockchain space, it, or in the interledger space, <laughs> is by making cryptographic notaries part of those cryptographic conditions that the parties agree to fulfill in the future. So brackets wants to be able to both link with the interbank and interbank systems to make these things more sort of flexible and fast. Um, we want to be able to suspend payments, so I don't do something to like, 
I, before I put goods on a ship, I make sure that there's a suspended payment to pay for those goods that will be released when that ship arrives. Um, and you should be able to cancel. So like there's escape clauses in all of our systems. So like we don't want to do this anymore. We want to change the terms. You sign this thing and it negates everything that's gone before. You've essentially provably notified all the parties of the change of content. And that should just be able to undo anything. Really fits well with like sort of the way Interledger has been sort of imagined. Um, I just wanted to like sort of uh, color what I'm talking about by like the idea of okay, what is this real? What would it look like to blockchain people? Um, so we consider ourselves blockchain agnostic. We haven't picked a final technology that is our blockchain technology. We built proof of concepts on Bitcoin. We've been proof, built proof of concepts on Ethereum tile ledger. The IBM Open Chain stuff looks super interesting. Um, but this is the notion of what would a blockchain contract look like that also contained the cryptographic conditions to release an interledger notary? Um, so, like on the on the right is a system that like is like our sort of standard contract. That's just like sort of like you know your standard multi-sig agreeing to something. You know, we have a threshold number of signatures. You sign a bunch of things. You and that uh, you know eventually reaches the threshold, and everybody can then publicly see that something has been agreed upon. Um, what we would do to incorporate an interledger notary is add to that like a hash lock, for instance, where you have to, in addition to providing a signature, also reveal a token. Um, and when you reveal that token, when all the tokens are revealed, it both notarizes on our blockchain system that this contract has been agreed to, but it also provides cryptographic conditions to release it. So I guess our, 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 we build a system that treats blockchains as a single sort of truth for contract state. Um, this allows customers to be able to not have to, for instance, call Citigroup's giant office in Tampa and wait on the phone for half an hour to figure out whether or not their documents are in office. Um, but we, and so we have a very broad view of applications of distributed ledger. And we would like to work with the larger community to develop specifications for how distributed systems can implicitly notarize transfers on interlinked. Um, and just finally, like this is our sort of imagined flow. Um, seller issues the good on the bracket ledger uh, or issues a bracket. Buyer suspends a payment on the buyer's bank ledger. Seller ships the goods on the bracket ledger. Um, condition, and then the buyer is implicitly <coughs> accepted that when they accept the goods, it implicitly releases the payment because they cryptographic conditions that they must fulfill to accept the goods also release the payment. And then the seller receives payment on the seller's bank. Um, so that's, that's it's not that complicated. It's pretty simple. Um, I, to I totally understand that like, you got like almost no sense of what we do. Um, <laughs> and uh, that is a condition of like, I'm in there. Oh, just like, I'm just um, but like our use case is basically like we really care about the cryptographic condition spec. We want to be able, we, we, that's the piece of this whole ecosystem that we really care about. Um, and we want to be able to make sure that that fits our use case. <clears throat>